Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 9. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look more at our sequence, so we're going to have our character here walk across the camera where we had it originally and then it'll pan across to the next step of the sequence and we'll do that using a c-sharp script and playing a little bit more with animation and don't forget to hit the subscribe button click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with this series and everything else i have on my channel and with that in mind let's get to work so what we need to do basically is take this character right here and i'm actually going to turn him off after we've duplicated him because this is the one which we actually have control of in our scene but because this is going to be a cutscene of sorts, we don't specifically want control. So I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate him. And then I'm going to turn the original one off up here. Then I'm going to move this one over to about here. So I think that's a pretty good place to start. So the idea is he's going to walk across here. We can't see him at first, but we hear the footsteps and he walk across and we'll do these sound effects as well. So what we need to do now is we need to remove these two components. So remove animation, right click, remove, and character control, right click, remove. So we need to keep in mind whereabouts our character is at the moment. So roughly he needs to be probably around here against the wall relative to where this camera is that's going to render the first scene. So now what we need to do is attach by default his walking animation. So we need to go to his folder here, and attach the walking animation. So if I just drag and drop that onto here, and then if we press, press play, and then click scene view whilst in play mode, we should be able to see him walking endlessly. Now, I've already measured the timing of this to the best I can, you know, given time restraints and everything, you should probably take a little bit more time to re refine your actual timing, but we're gonna get him walking across here. So, at that point, what we need to do is we also need to duplicate him here because he's going to reappear here when he's finished walking. So we take him once again, hold control, press D, and bring him over this way. Now, we can actually have two on scene at once because it's not going to matter too much. Because remember, I've said it many times before, if the camera doesn't see it, it doesn't matter, especially right now. So we can see this is how it's going to look. Even though he stood over here, he isn't actually there. However, when it pans to that camera, we can see him just there. So it looks like we need to move him just a little bit more. And we need to then attach the idle animation instead of the walk. So the idle becomes the default on this one. So let's just quickly check that that's okay in scene view. There we go, we can see him right there. So now, what do we do? You're thinking, yep, yeah, we've got this in place, but how do we actually get this working? So originally we had that sequence holder right here, A01 cam switch. And if we go to it, we can do another script in here. Right click, create, C sharp script. Now theoretically, if it's a long cut scene, you should probably have these all in one, but I'm doing this because I want to show you how two scripts can react to the same kind of sequence. So we're gonna call this a o two underscore move char short for character of course so what do we need to do here well we've got the script open we've got it ready but i also said we're going to do some sound effects didn't i some stepping sound effects so maybe we should actually bring them in first they're right here so in our um, scene down here we're going to need to create a new folder down here right click create folder audio and in here let's create a subfolder just basically called fx so short uh, for sound effects so drag and drop these two into unity and you can get these on the website head over there downloads and assets gta series and tutorial number nine and you can download them for free so we've got them into place perfect so now let's write our script so we're going to use uh, both start, update, and we're also going to use a coroutine because we need to control the flow of time. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to have up here to get rid of this annotation. Firstly, we need the two audio sources. So public audio source, and we'll have left 
foot, and then same again for right foot. Public audio source right foot semicolon. Next, we need to determine which one we're using, whether we're doing left or right. So public bool, and we'll have stepping left. And by default, we'll have it as true. So we're going to have left foot first. Uh, next is going to be the actual character himself. So public game object. And we'll just have this as main char. Again, short for character. And finally, we need to determine how many steps we need to take. So in testing for all this, I think it's about 11 or 12 steps for him to walk across the scene. So we're going to have public int and steps taken. So this is going to be a count within our coroutine. Now, before we go into start, we're actually going to do the update and we can get rid of that annotation as well. All the update is going to contain is the movement from one side of the scene to the other for our main character. And we do that by going main char. So we reference that asset, that asset, that variable, I should say. And we need to transform dot translate. And remember case sensitivity. Always remember case sensitivity. So we're going to move it across the Z axis, not the X, not the Y, the Z. So we're going to move it across the scene. And it's going to be a relatively low number, but it's also got to be dictated by the current time scale. So we do zero for X, comma, zero for Y, comma, and this number is going to be something like 0 0.01, um, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be quite minuscule like that. So we'll do 0 0.1 as well. I should say if you're using the same model as I am, if you're using a different model, just refine your work and multiply that by time dot time scale. Now we will get into time scale a little bit more in this series when we come to things like pausing the game and slow motion, things like that. What time scale actually is, is the current setting for the speed of the game. This means that the game is at one. That means it's running real time. If it's two, it's running double time. If it's zero, it means it's stopped. So this number here would effectively still come out as 0 0.014 because it's 0 0.014 multiplied by one semicolon. That's all there is in void update. So this is where the larger part of code comes in. And this is going to be our walking sequence. And we need to go I enumerator and we'll just call it walk sequence, open close bracket, open curly bracket. So within here, I'm going to initially delay the start of the walking sequence by just under half a second, or it could be half a second. It could be as long as you want technically, but remember that's relative to here. So just because you're waiting for the camera here, it still means that this coroutine in our cam switcher will go ahead. So if you want to wait for say five seconds, make sure you adjust the time frame within the cam switcher. I'm going to only wait for just under half a second. So that is irrelevant for me at the moment. Just keep that in mind. So yield, return new, wait for seconds and in brackets 0.4 F semicolon. Right. The next thing we have to do is a while. Now, what we have to do here is basically say while our steps taken is less than 12, then we need to repeat the same action. So we can type while, and in brackets, steps taken is less than 12. Remember I said it's about 11, 12 steps to walk across the scene. So I'm gonna put 12 just to test, and then open curly bracket. So within here, we firstly need to wait for roughly half a second. So yield, return new wait for seconds 0.5 f semicolon at this point we need to determine whether we're going to play the left stepping sound or the right stepping sound and that's where this bool comes into play that we placed up here so that means we need to go if and in brackets stepping left equals that's double equals to true which it will be when we start, then we need to have 
left foot dot play open close bracket semicolon and then we need to set it as false so stepping left equals false so what that means is that after it's done this and gone to false it will repeat this while but it will go to the else section of our if statement in which case we would have right foot dot play up goes bracket semicolon and then finally you've guessed it you just put stepping left back equals true stepping left equals true semicolon so that's the end of that if statement but to close up the while we need to increase steps taken by one every time so after the else say, uh, statement right there we have steps taken plus equals one so it'll add one every time after we've done all that so after we've done all of our steps the final thing we need to do within this coroutine walk sequence is turn off that walking character so it doesn't appear twice when we change to the second camera so main char dot set active false semicolon and save the script let's head back to unity and let's set these two sounds up within our scene so we could do it on the main camera if we wanted to but i think it's going to be better if we actually attach it to the contract killer character over here so what we need to do is right click and create empty and right click and rename that game object and let's call it left foot and then drag and drop left step over here and it will attach it then you have this audio source component I'm not going to go into audio source too much because it is relatively simple but we'll be dealing again more with audio source later in the series as i've said before we're doing this scene here to get ourselves acquainted basically with a lot of unity work which we can then advance when we create the giant city so we need to untick play on awake the reason we untick that is because play on awake means it will play as soon as the scene starts we don't want to do that we only want to play it on command from our script everything else is just a way of modifying how it sounds make sure loop isn't ticked either because we don't want it to loop and then hold control press d on that object and f2 and rename it to right foot and then drag and drop that right step into this audio clip section up there okay so we've got the audio in place perfect now we just need to attach the script to our sequence holder so let's go back to our script drag and drop onto sequence holder and then left foot drag and drop right foot drag and drop and main character is going to be contract killer one because he was the duplicated one from the original and i'm going to save my scene there and now press play and let's see how this goes okay so it doesn't seem to want to do it does it so where have we gone wrong so left foot right foot okay so they are there they are there what happens if i have play on awake do they actually play okay so they do play but they're not playing every time that we step across the scene which is a little bit odd because it does say so there okay so let's turn them off okay so it looks like there's a little bit of a bug going on here not entirely sure why but let's uh, have a sequence holder and let's watch these steps taken go up so let's just play the scene without the audio for now okay so yeah i can see what's happening there i can see what's happening there so it looks like we're not actually starting the go routine oh that's a classic jimmy moment guys classic jimmy so we need to actually state here start co routine and in brackets walk sequence open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so you know people have senior moments that was a jimmy moment 
I believe we all have them. Okay, so let's put this into practice now. We have everything in place. The coroutine will start. Let's check this out. Okay. So there we go. So this section here is going to be where the chair is that we have our captive, we'll say. So I'm going to quickly add in a chair now. And we've all been to the asset store before. We know what we're looking for. So let's look for wooden chair. Obviously, you don't have to use the same one I do. Uh, let's just go with this one. This is one I've already downloaded myself and have within a project. It's just a chair. Check out this guy's work if you want to. It's a nice chair. It'll do for what we need. Uh, bring it here into our scene. So I'm going to drop about there. It's, in fact, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the actual uh, prefab and decrease the size 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. So just a chair. So we're going to use this to bring in our character that sat down with a bag on his head or something like that. So next tutorial, what I would like to do is I would like to deal some more with sound effects. So I want to have a point where the sound of him uh, walking doesn't just cut off. It has that kind of stopping sound on the floor. So we'll add that to our scene. Uh, we'll also add a little bit of sound effect, like ambience to it, maybe because this is going to be a port, so we'll probably have a bit of seagulls, some wind, some foghorns or something like that. And we'll also bring in the character that's going to be in this chair with the bag on his head. So you can see the sequence and the scene coming together quite nicely now. So what you guys need to do is measure up your scene, take your time, align everything just right. There we go. Perfect. What I think I might do actually is one thing I'm not convinced about is how he disappears off the scene. So I may, in fact, take left foot and right foot and just have them as their own object, maybe about here and move them to here because it kind of cuts off the sequence. So maybe we could go with that and also move this character forward just a little. I'm just going to see how this scene sounds now. Okay, that's not too bad. That, that may be all right. So, like I say, guys, you just need to refine what we've worked with so far, and I will see you next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.